Hello there, Mad Mike here, and welcome back to the channel. Um, and today we're going to talk about something that's kind of a broad subject uh, in a way, but it's been brought up um, again as something that's kind of been, it's been an ongoing story the last, you know, six months roughly, or, or a little over a year, or maybe closer to a year. Um, and that is kind of the, the artistry or the artiste directors um, and, and actors and stuff in Hollywood um, and their kind of detestment for the uh, more conglomerate, more uh, kind of streamlined and less creative uh, blockbuster films like Marvel and Star Wars. Um, and actually uh, Tarantino in this article that I, I, I just read uh also mentioned Godzilla and James Bond and stuff. Um, basically, the, the big budget franchises that are out. Um, and here's the thing. I don't disagree with the majority of the things that he's saying. I don't disagree that we did kind of see an influx of originality. Uh, or not originality, but uh, smaller films making a lot of money last year. Uh, in addition to the films that obviously were blockbusters that made a crap ton of money. Um but uh, basically, he's kind of talking about the idea that, uh, you know, the big conglomerate films, the Disney blockbusters, the Marvel, the Star Wars, uh, are going to kind of, you know, the idea that they were about to crush uh, the smaller filmmaker, you know, the, the less original, the, uh, the, the auteur, you know, that kind of thing. The one the guy that's making smaller films but still making incredibly good films um, because of the talent and because of the creativity. And uh, basically, Tarantino is kind of he he's he's making it seem like he's uh, he's kind of he's on a crusade against these big you know films. I, again, he specifically mentions Marvel and Star Wars and stuff. So most of those properties are owned by Disney, um, and it's unfortunate that he kind of had to put it this way because th this is this is one of those things that I think people don't really understand about how, how Hollywood works. And I'm not saying that Taran, I know more about Hollywood than Quentin Tarantino does. I'm not saying that. But from a numbers perspective, here's the thing, is that you need the big tentpole films so you can have those smaller films. Because here's the thing. And again, this kind of, this counteracts a little bit of, uh, of you know, what happened last year with certain films like Joker and stuff like that, is that there are a lot of these small a lot of these smaller films when they get made they don't make a whole lot of money even if they're amazing films sometimes they lose money look at films like blade runner because of the advertising department that film tanked when it came out you know it did not make money um yet when we look back on it it's one of the greatest science fiction films of all time um but the thing is, is that a lot of these films that we herald as, you know, these great achievements, you know, a lot of films that win Oscars, uh, they don't, uh, they don't really bring in the money. They don't bring in a whole lot of profit um, with them. And and what profit they do bring in is very minimal. And it's the thing is, a studio, a, a film studio, unless they're putting out a huge number of these small films, kind of like what Canon did back in the day, um, you can't recoup everything you know you're gonna have flops you're gonna have films that fail but you need to have the cushion and that's what these bigger films provide you is that cushion now from a narrative and story standpoint they can be just as good as those smaller films that are helmed by those more creative uh, generally by those more creative directors but a lot of the times they're not and that's the thing is that uh, viewing public does not expect that they don't expect you know Shakespeare when you're going to go see an Avengers movie that you know if you do then you're insane uh, but the the point is that uh, when you look at the amount of money that the smaller films bring in compared to what the bigger films bring in you know here's the thing you can get uh, Avengers Endgame made three billion dollars reportedly um, and I don't know if it was necessarily a joint budget but reportedly Avengers Endgame was somewhere in the 350 million range in terms of budget that means that that film broke even roughly, um, it would be roughly around the 800 to 900 million mark. Was when, between 8 and 900 million was when that film probably broke even. That means you had almost a solid $2 billion of profit from that film, if you're going by that estimate. Which again, that if the you know the budget could be lower. The budget, if the budget's lower, that means they made even more money than what that is. But 
The thing is, how many of those small little films can you make for two billion dollars? And hundreds, literally hundreds, if you wanted to. You can green light two hundred small little indie Sundance films if you wanted to, with two billion dollars. And that's the thing that I think a lot of these people that comment like this don't really get is that you want to make your film. You love the type of film that you love, and that's fine. You can love you can you can be a person who likes, you know, finer film. You can be a person that prefers that. You can be a person that thinks that the, all the summer blockbusters are dreck. And I think a lot of them are dreck, too, even the Marvel films, uh, especially from a writing standpoint sometimes. Um, but it's one of those things that, you know, you can think that, but at the same time, if you're a director and you're making films in Hollywood, you can't start going to war with studios and saying you can't make blockbusters anymore. Um or, or that blockbusters should be eradicated and stuff like that. Like some, some directors are saying, look, I, I don't disagree with Martin Scorsese, and I went over that in a video, and I went over that in a post after the fact, is that I agree with all of his points, um, except for the point that it wasn't cinema. And again, that was something he clarified later on, but the idea was correct, is that, look, he likes the type of films that he likes. Do you, do you honestly think that Martin Scorsese was the first guy in line to buy tickets for Avengers fucking Endgame? I seriously doubt it. <laughs> and if he was, that's very interesting to me. But, you know, I don't think anybody would have expected that to be his initial reaction. And then you look at other guys that are further down the line, guys like Kevin Smith, who I don't think he's ever had a budget of more than like forty-five million dollars, maybe for his films. You know, he he comes, who's he's basically an independent director himself, and he says, "I love the Marvel movies. I love comic." Book. He's, to be fair, he's also a comic book nerd, but you know, I'm assuming Martin Scorsese isn't. Uh, but you've had a lot of big name directors that have been interested in doing uh, superhero and other films. Look at Steven Spielberg. Steven Spielberg made his made his living off of just doing summer blockbuster after summer blockbuster, and he's won two Oscars. So do you want to go up? So Quentin Tarantino, do you want to go up to to Steven Spielberg and say, yeah, yeah, you know, you're an awesome director, and I I love all your work, and then you remember, oh, he was one of those guys that made summer blockbusters. Fuck you, you know. It seems like it's it's he. He's criticizing something that's kind of a necessary evil from a Hollywood standpoint. Because um, even if you don't like it, even if you hate it, even if you want it to go away, it's one of those things that it's going to stick around because it makes money and because it allows studios more freedom to greenlight smaller projects. Now, I will say this. The studios are going about the whole thing in a very bad way. They are not... They are staying way too safe. They are not taking chances on original properties at most levels, except for the very, very low-budgeted level. Um, and I think that they could do more to promote talent and bring up new and possibly better talent than what they have now and allow kind of things to branch out a lot more than what they have been because again you're raking in the money you know if you're making if you made like i said you made two billion dollars of profit but the thing is disney doesn't have uh the balls to actually go and start making like actual you know lower budgeted more adult oriented films which may be the reason why they acquired fox but um looking into that still it's the idea that you you know the, the 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 article is actually titled the war of war of movies or uh, the war against movies or something like that where it's the you know the big budget versus the lower budget and you know you can you can look at Joker it made a buttload of money it passed the one billion mark on a, a minuscule budget um, you know you can look at Once Upon a Time in Hollywood which I think everybody knew it was going to make a decent amount of money but it made a good amount of money. Um, you know, definitely turned a big profit. Uh, but these things, for the most part, are outliers when it comes to, to doing that with small films. You're not going to be able to churn out small films that are going to make a billion dollars every time, like Joker. You know, nobody thought that thing was going to make a billion dollars. I thought it was probably going to make somewhere in the six to seven hundred million range if it got accepted really good, but I was not expecting what actually happened with it. Um, especially because I figured it was not going to get... Uh, a decent, it was not going to get a China release. I, I figured that much because of the graphic violence. Uh, but, you know, still, it hit that mark. But 
it's not something that I think can be sustainable because a lot of these lower budgeted films are experimental unless you have somebody like a Tarantino or a Scorsese or a Nolan or somebody behind the camera who knows what they're doing and knows how to really make a film and can really get the most talent out of the you know out of a budget and out of the, the things they can get using the budget um, then you know, you're not really sure what you're going to get, which is why it's kind of a, you know, which is why it's taking a risk for studios when they go in and they, and they start greenlighting these indie projects because you don't necessarily know what it's going to be. The The bigger budgeted films go through more filters, which, yes, makes them less creative. I've gone over that before, um, is that it, it does make them less of, of a creative venture and more of kind of, st of a sterile corporate product. But I understand why that needs to be there for a certain perspective because of so much of the investment that's gone into the film and, and here's the thing is it's the eternal battle of Hollywood it's the idea of creativity versus um, you know monetary value versus versus getting rich off of making films um, and the the battle has been there since the very beginning I assure you of that it is it is it has been around a very 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 long time and that battle is never going to end. Now, is it a little bit more one-sided at the moment, where the corporate, you know, whatever is banging down on the more creative side of film? Yes, yes it is. Uh, but that doesn't mean that the battle isn't there. And, but the thing is, is that you're not, it's not just last year. You know, and Quentin Tarantino says that it's like, oh, what happened last year? It's like, no, that fight has been going on for a very long time. Uh, and... It's never going to end because you're, those two entities have to exist for modern filmmaking to basically exist at the level that it does. Um, now, again, this is not advocating for, for blockbusters uh, or, or saying that smaller films can, you know, go to hell. This, is, this isn't doing that. This is just sh showing and explaining that there is a reason why blockbusters exist and there is a reason why smaller budgeted films exist and they have to exist in some kind of symbiosis so that they can both stick around uh, or that so so it's you know it's one of those type of things um and you know here's the other thing is that the the, the idea of a blockbuster has changed over the years uh, you know, blockbusters are a lot, obviously blockbusters are a lot different today than what they were back in the day. You know, look look at a movie like Gone with the Wind, um, which had an insane theatrical uh, release when it came out in the 50s. And to this day, if you actually adjust for inflation, the amount of money that Gone with the Wind took in, it would blow every single other film ever made out of the water. It would have made something like seven billion dollars at the box office in today's money. Okay, so that that film was an unparalleled success that has never been equaled. And the the movie itself, you know, is a blockbuster. It's the definition of a summer blockbuster. It is literally the biggest summer blockbuster ever made, uh, or blockbuster period ever made. And Yet we remember it as this irreverent because it is because is, we remember it as this irreverent film uh, with all these great actors and great lines and, and an amazing story that people loved and that's the thing is that it was all those things but it was also a blockbuster so you, you got to kind of remember to to take certain things in context blockbusters weren't always what they are today but they always have had to exist. So, you know, it's just one of those things. It's kind of a broad subject. I know I'm, you know, I'm, I'm rambling a little bit here. Um, but, you know, I felt it was something interesting to touch on, especially with those remarks coming out today from Quentin Tarantino. Because um, I, I don't want to see this thing, you know, I'm not going to stop it if it does, but I'm not, I don't want to see this thing drag on and on and on and just the media perpetuate it. Because this, this thing should have ended after that initial article it should have never blown up it should have never gotten to this point and it makes very little sense to to kind of coin this as anything new in hollywood it's just it's becoming a bit more apparent than it normally is but it's always been there um but i want to know what you think do you think that you know blockbusters and uh low budgeted films sh you know do they need to share the stage like what I think, you know, like a symbiosis? Or do you think that, you know, the blockbusters are in danger of crushing out those small films and Tarantino was right about this kind of pushback uh, that is just kind of starting now 
uh, with these uh, Hollywood directors and stuff kind of going after the, the Disney Marvel products. Um, uh, again, I always like to know what you're thinking, so put your thoughts in the comments below. Uh, hit the bell for notifications, hit the like button, subscribe, and remember, I live my life free of compromise. Do you?